everybody, welcome back. So today we're going to be looking at a monologue that from a show that we've already looked at before. And no, it's not Hamlet again. I'm wearing pink, not black. So please take a moment to look at the monologue below, pause me, read it, and then come on back. Today our monologue is from A Midsummer Night's Dream, and we're looking at the character of Oberon, who is king of the fairies. Now, last time we looked at this, we were looking purely at Puck's final monologue, and so we were kind of really looking at that and talking about how that works. So today I'm going to give you a brief overview of the plot of Midsummer, so that you are aware of where this kind of lies in everything. And to do so, I have got some props with me because I will get it mixed up otherwise. So, let's start. We have Hermia, who is here in the blue cap, who is in love with Lysander, who is here in the black cap. Also in love with Hermia is Demetrius, here in the red cap. And here in the purple cap is Helena. Helena and Demetrius used to be a thing. But Demetrius uh, said, no, I think I like Hermia better now. Plus, her father's really rich and likes me. So what happens is Hermia, Lysander, and Demetrius are all in front of the Duke of Athens, and the Duke of Athens says, hey, Hermia, your father has given Demetrius the permission to marry you, so you better marry him or there are going to be consequences. And he pieces out. So... Lysander and Hermia decide they are going to run off to one of Lysander's uh, family's houses somewhere in a different city so they can, you know, live happily ever after. And they have to go through the woods to do so. Now, they tell Helena what they're doing, and they leave. Helena is supposed to use that information and use basically the knowledge that they're going so that she can eventually win back Demetrius. She does not just take the opportunity as it comes, but instead goes and says, Hey, Demetrius, Hermia ran away with Lysander. And so Demetrius goes, Well, dang, I should chase after them, and chases after them. Helena, realizing the mistake she has made, chases after him. So now all four of them are in the woods. Meanwhile, Oberon is arguing with his wife, the queen of the fairies, Titania, and they've had a whole falling out, and they're going their separate ways. And Oberon sees all four of our Athenian children wandering about in the woods. And he sees how badly Helena is treated by Demetrius. He sees there should be some love there. And what he does is he thinks, hey, I was already going to do this to mess with Titania, but I think I can help these people out while I'm at it. Because fairies are both mischievous and helpful that way. And so he tells Puck to go find this flower, and this flower has the ability that if you make it into a juice, basically, it will, if you rub it over somebody's eyes, they'll fall in love with the next person they see upon waking up. And the monologue that we're looking at is what happens after Puck comes back with the flower. And Puck, and basically Oberon says, hey, give me that, I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna basically make Titania fall in love with what Ever it is that she sees next, and I'll try and make it something ridiculous. But by the way, Puck, take some of the juice yourself, and there's an Athenian out in the woods who uh, doesn't like the girl that he's with. Please go make sure his eyes are, are washed with this too so that he falls in love with the right girl. Let's just say it doesn't go exactly to plan. Uh, he find, Puck ends up finding... Hermia and Lysander puts it on Lysander's eyes, and Lysander ends up seeing Hermia next, uh, Helena next, and they and he falls in love with her. Then Puck realizes they realize the mistake. The, Demetrius gets the stuff and ends up falling in love with Helena, leaving poor Hermia out in the cold. Eventually, everything does end happily, and the people who are supposed to be with who they're supposed to be with are are all put together. Hermia is with Lysander, Helena with Demetrius. Everything all works out in the end. So, the thing about the character from this monologue, Oberon is king of the fairies. Now, fairies in and of themselves are fairly mischievous creatures in a lot of mythology, especially in Shakespeare's time, thought of as such. But he's also the king of the fairies, so he has a certain solemnity to him. And so you have to kind of make that... figure out where on the spectrum you are. Is he in full king mode, where he is, you know, being very royal and regal and... 
and serious, or is he being playful and mischievous, speaking with his best servant, who is also playful and mischievous? That's up to you as the actor, and there's a really fun little line you can walk there. Now, like most of Midsummer, this monologue has a lot of imagery in it, because if you look at what Shakespeare was able to work with, he didn't have sets or lights or terribly fancy costumes. I mean, they had some costuming capability, it's just clothes. But it's not like a production today where you go and see a show set in ancient Rome, you've got giant columns, lighting that makes it look like that, everybody's in the togas. No, you don't get that. So it's all a matter of Shakespeare had to do a lot with his words. So in this case, he uses a lot of descriptor in this to explain where Titania is and what he's going to do with, with this flower, and then it switches over to this command to Puck. So, let's take a look at Oberon. I pray thee, give it me. <laughs> I know a bank where the wild thyme blows, where oxlips and the nodding violet grows, quite over canopied with luscious woodbine, with sweet musk roses and with elegantine. There sleeps Titania sometime of the night, lulled in these flowers with dances and delight. <laughs> and there the snake throws her enameled skin, weed wide enough to wrap a fairy in. And with the juice of this I'll streak her eyes and make her full of hateful fantasies. <laughs> Take thou some of it, and seek through this grove. A sweet Athenian lady is in love with a disdainful youth. Anoint his eyes, but do it when the next thing he espies may be the lady. Thou shalt know the man by the Athenian garments he hath on. Effect it with some care, that he may prove more fond on her than she upon her love. And look thou meet me ere the first cock crow. So... Yeah, looking at that, you've got Oberon giving that final command, and it's a nice little switch in the middle of that monologue where he's going from very gleeful, like, yes, I'm going to get to Tanya, to, oh, by the way, Puck, do this thing to help these young lovers because she really could use the help. Anyway, tomorrow's Friday, which means, guess what? I'll be back in black. We'll take another look at Hamlet. Bye!